Last time I talked to you, we had a great conversation. At the end of the conversation, you urged me to go to Haiti. So I did. Took my camera crew. We went and shot a show there, and I had one of the most amazing experiences of my life. So thank you for, for encouraging me to do that. Well, it was really great. Life-changing. Thank you for doing it. I, I was there just shortly after your trip, and I saw that you did a great show. And, and the timing of it was exceptional in response to uh, some unkind words that the president had said about mm -hmm. Haiti, among other countries. And um, there, you know, like in any culture, there are people that are more sensitive than others to these things. Some, it kind of is water off uh, a duck's back, sort of, when yeah. something like that is said. But I knew many people for whom it was a very painful attack on their pride. Yeah. And the, that you went down uh, was very important to them. And that you came and, and brought uh, your humor and shared it with them, uh, gave them that stage. It was, uh, it was an, an, an important thing, so thank you. Well, I absolutely, I love being there. The people. The people, the people are so funny, they're so full of life, they're so vivacious, and it is interesting when you say that because we're so used to in this country, you know, president says something and you think, well, okay, a country will hear it, but you think of it as a country, not people. When you go there, and we had the same experience, we went to Mexico after, some, after a campaign that, uh, that the president, uh, our now president, uh, ran pretty much against Mexico and the Mexican people. I went down there for that show, and just as in Haiti, I found real people whose feelings were hurt yeah. on a human level. And when you talk to them about it, you realize it's people. It's, it's people. It's people, and, and it's also people who, if they have a love for a particular country outside their own, it's ours. Yeah. And for a, a leader to not recognize that and to not respect that and to appreciate it, um, is disappointing. You know, it was amazing to me when, when we were in Haiti, you went right after the 2010 quake hit. And I don't think people in this country still can appreciate the magnitude of that quake and how many people lost their lives and how decimated Port-au-Prince was and, and the areas around Port-au-Prince, just devastated. And I was curious, you went there and you saw that happen how long were you there after the earthquake? You were there, I mean, you were living in the country for quite a long time. We were living in a, a, a tent camp adjacent, the largest tent, uh, dis, uh, internally displaced person camp, IDP camp. Um, I, I was, but for a few days over the course of it, I was living nine months yeah. there for the first stretch. And then going back, uh, you know, back and forth quite a bit. Um, while the organization, JPHRO, was building itself. And right. so there, were, there was that. And now, fortunately, we, we had started with 30 Americans. Yep. And now we have <clears throat> about six or seven Americans and a total crew of uh, over 100, sometimes with day workers over 1,000. Yep. And all Haitian and all Haitian run. And uh, they're doing an extraordinary job. You know, what's incredible, yeah, they are, the, the work they're doing there is amazing. It also, on a personal note, we, our crew, we were driving everywhere. There was not a single uh, part of Haiti or Port-au-Prince that we were able to get to where people didn't, I, I didn't see one area where they didn't say, yeah, Sean was here about a year ago. He fixed my bike tire. You know, like, it, 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 it's almost like you're everywhere. Some of them seem annoyed. <laughs> wouldn't, you, wouldn't you be? Yeah, uh, he was here again asking if he could do anything for us. We told him, please go away for a bit. I, I wanted to end on a positive note about Haiti, which was my, I don't know if you agree, I was there and I've been to many places in the world where I felt, whether it's the West Bank, whether it's Syria, I, I think, I don't know that there's a solution here. If there is, I don't know what it is. It's not in my power to think of it. Haiti seems like the problems there are solvable. It feels like it's great people, beautiful natural resources, and yes, they need help. And yes, there's a lot of work to be done, but it does feel like in 20 years that could be a very different place. Well, I think, you know, when you look at the history, because Haiti has, has certainly presented a case, and why Haiti, I mean, with a lot of help and intervention uh, um, holding it back as well, but they presented a case that seems to be this kind of treadmill. But in fact, now, what happens in a lot of cultures is, is that, they, that people come to accept 
um, the, the too little that they have. But over time, between the, the human necessity of dreams um, being fulfilled, and particularly for their kids, where they spent 45% of their annual income on their education, mm -hmm. that, that, that this generation of kids who are now interconnected and see how the other side lives, see what's available in this world, and they're sharing that with each other, I think all of us that are working there have a, a, a great optimism that in our lifetime we're going to see tremendous change in Haiti and the kind that might be done in a way replicable to some other places that are similarly suffering. So we have um, uh, only great hope there.